In this video, I want to talk about classical conditioning and learned helplessness in complex PTSD. What is classical conditioning? It is a term that refers to a learning procedure in which a biologically potent stimulus is paired with a previously neutral stimulus. It also refers to the learning process that results from this pairing through which the neutral stimulus comes to elicit a response that is usually similar to the one elicited by the potent stimulus. Ivan Pavlov tested this on dogs and published his results in 1897. You have probably heard of his experiments. He noticed that when an assistant would go to feed the dogs, the dogs would begin to salivate at the sight of him. Pavlov did an experiment where he would play a metronome when the dogs were being fed. Later he would just use the metronome, and the dogs would salivate, even if there was no food. That is classical conditioning. The dogs became conditioned to believe that when they heard the sound, it meant they would be fed, and their body reacted accordingly by producing saliva. Humans can be conditioned in the same way. As a child, you can become conditioned that certain sounds like a slamming door or a raised angry voice could mean that something bad was about to happen to you. You will experience the same physical sensations. Your heart rate will increase. Your body will produce adrenaline. You will feel anxious. You may want to hide or freeze or run away. That conditioning doesn't just magically go away. As an adult, you will still respond to those sounds as if danger is coming, even if everything is fine. There is another experiment carried out on dogs. This one was done by a man named Martin Seligman. In 1967, at the University of Pennsylvania, as an extension of his interest in depression, he took three sets of dogs. The first set was put in a harness and left alone. The second and third set were shocked. The difference was the second set of dogs were taught that if they pushed a lever, the shocks would stop. When the second set of dogs pushed the lever, the shocks would stop for them and the third set of dogs. To be clear, the second set of dogs learned that if they pushed the lever, the shocks would stop. The third set just thought the shocks stopped at random and they had no control over them. They couldn't see the second set of dogs push the lever. Later, after the dogs were conditioned to the shocks, another experiment was performed on them. They were placed in a box with a small fence in the middle. On one side of the box had a floor that was electrified. The other side didn't. The first set of dogs were placed on the electrified side and immediately jumped the small fence to the other safe side. The second set of dogs also immediately jumped to the other side. The third set, however, just laid down and whimpered. They had been conditioned to believe that no matter what they did, the shocks would not stop. The humans tried many things to coax the third group into jumping to the other side. They tried food, they tried yelling at them and whipping them, but the dogs still cowered on the floor being shocked. The only thing that could teach them was if the experimenters physically moved their legs and pushed them over the fence. After several times, the dogs did learn to jump to safety. The behavior the third set of dogs displayed was called learned helplessness. The behavior occurs when the subject endures repeatedly painful or otherwise aversive stimuli, which it is unable to escape from or avoid. After such experiences, the organism often fails to learn or accept escape or avoidance in new situations where such behavior is likely to be effective. In other words, the organism learned that it is helpless. In situations where there is a presence of averse stimuli, it has accepted that it has lost control and thus gives up trying. Even as changing circumstances offer a method of relief from said stimuli, humans can learn helplessness also. If exposed to repeated long-term trauma, abuse, or neglect, you may believe that you can't be safe around people or certain types of people. 
You may live in fear and isolation as a result. This can lead to agoraphobia, homelessness, addiction. This idea that nothing you do will change anything leads to the hopelessness associated with depression. You may feel like you lack the ability to control your life, that you are at the mercy and cruel intentions of everyone around you. A story I heard a while back illustrates this point well. It's most likely not true, but it is still a good example. It's the story of restraining baby elephants. The story goes that when an elephant trainer begins training a baby elephant, they tie a hemp rope to its leg and tie the other end to a metal spike driven into the ground. As a baby, the elephants jerk and pull on the line but can't get loose. As they grow, they stop trying to get free and just accept that the rope cannot be broken. So as an adult, they are held by a rope they could easily break or a small spike they could yank out of the ground. They give up. They learn they are helpless to escape, only they really could just walk away, but they don't think it's possible. We humans learn a similar lesson in childhood. We learn that no amount of pleading or crying will make the negative stimuli stop, that no matter what we do, we are stuck in a life we cannot control. We learn to give up. We learn the opposite of what is healthy for us. We learn we have no power. We lose self-confidence. We learn to mistrust and become fearful. We stop trying because there's no point. If no one is in our lives that help us, like when the scientists physically move the dogs in group three, when they move them to the safe side away from the shocks, If you don't have a person like that in your life to help you as a child, then you will learn that life is hopeless and you are powerless to control it. Even when you are an adult, on your own away from the negative people or environments, you still retain that conditioning. Healing from complex PTSD means recognizing how those things affected you and still affect you to this day. The more you become aware of all your negative conditioning, the more you will be able to say, I'm not really in danger right now. It just feels that way. These sounds are triggering a response in me that protected me as a child, but I no longer need them. You can think of those responses as your child self. That child is trying to protect you still. Thank him or her for what they are trying to do, even if it is making your life miserable. Acknowledge that that little kid is doing the best they can. Show them the love and understanding that should have been shown to you. Do you feel like any of this resonated with you? Leave a comment below. You don't have to go into any specifics, but let others know they are not alone in how they feel. If you want, you can support this project in several ways. On YouTube, subscribing to my channel and liking the videos gets YouTube to recommend them to more people. I also have a Patreon account. There you can make a small donation. I will be adding extra content there as a way to thank everyone. The link is provided below. However you choose to support this channel, it will be a small step towards connecting with others, which is maybe the most important step to healing from CPTSD. Thank you for your support.